Well, hello everyone. Welcome to the Ham Shack Shop. Chloe's in here visiting with us. Everybody likes to see Jim's cats, so she likes to come in here too. This is Chloe. She's about eight years old, maybe six, I don't know, between six and eight. She's her favorite cat. We also have two dogs and another cat that uh, kind of lives upstairs in my son's room, more or less, because she's terrorized of the dogs. Chloe picks on the dogs. She's kind of like Heathcliff, you know, she'll, she'll sit behind the chair and swipe at them. And my one dog, who's not a small dog, will go running and hide behind the counter from Chloe. She's terrified of this cat, which uh, I find quite amusing at times. That's my dog barking in the background. If you can hear her, I don't know if you can hear her that far away because I got the door shut, but... Uh, this is just a quick update and a little show and tell video. I haven't put up a video in a couple of weeks. I know the uh, you know the radio project is continuing, and what happens with that all the time is my work schedule. You know, I'm off work. I could, I could get this shot better. Hmm. I, let me mix, fix my wire. You know, I work a lot, as I said, as a nurse. But my hours are going to be improving soon. I'm going to a new position. I'm going to have weekends off. <laughs> which doesn't happen often in nursing, but as you get older and you, <laughs> you have seniority and, you know, I'm getting closer to retiring in not, not the near future, but, you know, at least 12 years away anyway, 11 years away at the, at the least, probably go longer than that. But I'm going to the recovery room. I, I work in ICU right now, intensive care, but I'm going to go to the recovery room, which is where people are coming out from uh, the operating room under anesthesia in pain and sedated and you wake them up and <laughs> deal with their pain and their uh, discomfort from surgery which I actually do that now in ICU we get late surgery cases that come into ICU and we recover them anyway so it's not really a change in what I do it's just that I'll be doing all recoveries and no regular ICU patients anymore but I'm only at work when the OR is running which is Monday through Friday no weekends no holidays so I will be home uh, and probably in the ham shack more maybe anyway that's just a quick update on that so the radio i've done nothing more since the last video it's been sitting idle for two weeks literally i will be back at it soon i hope i was just off a few days but i was sick with a cold so uh i didn't get in here at all this is more of a show and tell and i'm glad chloe came in to say hello to us this here is the main thing that i was going to show off today some of you probably recognize this. This is this model uh, meter has been touted by a number of YouTubers, uh, not not least of which being EEV Blog, uh, Dave there in Australia, and also um, our good friend Dennis Carter uh, likes these. Bob Anderson, the TV guy, likes these. Uh, quite a few people do. Uh, and I've been watching them on eBay for a long time, waiting for a decent one to come up at a decent price, and I finally jumped on one. The uh, Fluke 27 was made in the mid-80s to the early to maybe 90, I think. I, I think I read somewhere it was like 86 to 90, something like that, maybe 87 to 90. They're military-grade, waterproof, drop-proof, etc. You can supposedly dunk this thing under water, not that I would try to go do that. There's yellow versions, there's gray versions. The gray versions are typically the military ones. Um, you'll also see that there's differences in the model numbers. And this one, I'll try to get in closer, is just a plain 27 up here. Now there's one that's it's 27 slash FM. This, the FM one is true RMS, from what I understand. This one, I'm not sure it's true RMS because it doesn't have the FM. Um, but, you know, I, I, as a hobbyist, I don't need True MF. The, re the one reason I bought this one is uh, it's the military-grade one. It's the gray one. The yellow ones were commercial. Uh, it came with a good case, and it came with a lot of leads and stuff with it, which was a big bonus, and it came at a good price. And I don't, I don't need True MF or RMS for what I do. I, I'm just a home hobbyist. I, I know I repeat that a lot. These leads I threw in here are the ones that I bought a while back from the uh, ham the state sale that I did a video on, uh, these are like 1500 volt, really nice probes, uh, heavy duty probes. And I, I had to trim them. The banana plugs didn't fit. They had the plastic cover on, uh, on them and I cut them so they fit. 
And yes, the meter works. Let's turn it on. Chloe wants to get a good look at it here, though. Actually, she wants me to pet her is what she wants. So you can see we're powered up. Now, when I opened this thing, it had an old beat-up. Oh, let me go to bolts. I'm going to do a battery tech check. So it's a huge meter. You can't get a sense for how big this is on a video unless you have one in your hand. Let me, let me show you my old, video, my old meter next to it. Hang on. Sorry, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I just thought about it. I was amazed. I used to think this is a big heavy-duty meter. It's it's very small <laughs> compared to this one. This is the one I had from uh, Dave, EEV -E -E blog recommendation also, uh, as a decent meter. And it served me well, but this is better, bigger. It's a fluke, hopefully more accurate. So anyway, let me go to voltage. This is DC voltage. AC is on the right, DC is on the left. I'm going to throw a little battery across it real quick. And I'll show you. This should be 1.5 volts. This is a new Duracell D battery. 1.612. And then let me grab a resistor. It's working, working well. I love this huge gauge. I like the fact that it doesn't have a lot of choices. It has uh, easy functionality, if you will. Some meters have so many choices, you, you're looking around for what you want to turn to. 4.83K, 4,830K, and that came out of my bin that's 4,700. Of course, it's an old uh, carbon comp, so that's probably... They're only supposed to be within 20% tolerance. That's my little devil ohmites. So I'm real happy with that. Now let me show you the case. This one came with an inch. I've never seen this case before for these. I've seen, they usually see these things with like a briefcase size thing, like an old, like a Pelican case, if you've ever heard of Pelican cases for old laptops. This is a different case that came with it. It is a fluke case, it says fluke right on the side, which you can almost make out. This has some guy's name on it. He engraved his name on the meter, too. Hard to open because it's fluke. Fits in here perfectly. Has this nice bale that you can stand it up on and very st extremely sturdy. Fits perfectly. Made for that. And then in here I have all these extra leads. Now the regular leads that came with it are in here. There was one extra clip lead. It's missing, unfortunately, the red one. Uh, and it says fluke right on it. I wish the red one was in here. This is an AC uh, voltmeter, AC current transformer. So this is the thing you would clamp on the outside of a an AC line, and it'll give you the voltage of it. Read it right through the... It couples to the current. And that comes with... Um, Got my leads all tangled up. This lead here is two banana plugs on the end of a nice lead. This plugs in here to this. Ta -da. And then the banana plugs plug into this. And then you put a hot line in there and it'll read the voltage. Let me. Uh, I actually have not tried this. Let's see if it'll work on a... If I can reach a power cord with it. I, the power cord will probably be off off the... Uh, oh, you know what? i got to put that to amps. Let me see if it says 1 to 1,000 AC current transformer input 2 to 150 amps. Maximum output current... Maximum voltage from output terminals 3, 30 volts AC. Huh. Okay, anyway, this has to go to amps. Let's do that. Let's put this to amps. Milliamps. Amps is over here. Off camera, I'm going to put this under the desk and put, put it on a hot line from my cord. Let's see if it reads it. I don't know if this is going to work or not. No. 
Well, it would help if I had these not reversed, right? Now that's common ground. Common amp. I may be wrong on how this thing works. Let's try that one. Nope. Don't know. I just have it clamped around my extension cord on the floor. Anyway, that's not why I bought the meter. That's not even something I think I would use. And I may be using that incorrectly. i got to look that up online. Google it, if you will. So those are all the leads I got. And then, of course, I'm using these leads here. Okay, I'm back. The, the cat was scratching at the door. My wife let her out. So we're back. So anyway, I like these leads the best. These are really good quality leads. Oh, and then I'm sorry, I almost forgot. That banana plug thing I was plugging into the AC thing underneath. This also came with these little clips, which are alligator clips, which have the banana plug input. So you can you can put them on the end of this. On the end of the banana lead put that in here let's flip it right to ohms so grab another resistor grab a different resistor clamp it into these two point five four K that came out of the twenty two hundred bin perfect so that makes it really, really handy. Okay. Enough on the meter. I'm very happy with this meter, though, as you can tell. That's my main meter now. I'm Here's the other item that. is to show and tell. Uh, this is a Sony ICF. I think it's an ICF. Where is it? Yeah, ICF 2001 radio. This was the very first digital output push-button radio made by Sony. These came out about 1980. Um, Jim Linden has had, has had a couple of these. He's done a really long video segment on these. They have lots of issues. They've, they worked great when they first came out. They were expensive when they first came out. I think they were in the range of $400 new um, because it was new technology. It's, you know, shortwave, FM, AM, the whole deal. And then it has six memories, which back then was a big deal. You know, you could store six stations on it. it does single sideband, has a single sideband adjustment. But there's lots of issues in these with the connections. Uh, corrosion, cracking, etc., etc. I got this one for very little on eBay. Didn't pay a lot for it. After watching Jim Lindeness' series, I thought, you know, I would love to try to restore one of these, but they're notoriously problematic. And this one is advertised as not working. So this is going to be a future project. Now, when I got it, it had no screws in it. It had already been opened, so I knew somebody had been in this. And, in fact, uh, they have been in it, and I'll show you where the real evidence of that is depending on how good we can get this camera in. I want to get the camera in a bit closer to show you what we're looking at. You're going to see these um, cables that connect the boards. There's The push button boards are up here under the shielding and they connect with this ribbon type cable down to the main radio board. You'll notice this is a bundle of white wires. That is not original. Originally, these radios had these, which I don't know how well you can, that's coming in the camera, but oh, at the tip of the screwdriver, you'll see this almost clear plastic ribbon cable. It's, that's the original ribbon cable. This would have been the same kind. Somebody has replaced that ribbon cable with this, with these wires. Um, and I know you can't see it on the, the camera well at all, but down here, you can see this is separated. The plastic on this ribbon cable is peeled back to expose the wires underneath. So the wires are just kind of hanging in the air there. And they can short against each other very easily. So uh, the connections on these ribbons are notoriously bad. Uh, I know Jim fixed them on his. Uh, this one has been completely changed out. 
Uh, I don't know what else in here is not original. That's the one glaring thing that I noticed right away. And um, it's going to be a future project for me to work on and try to get it working. It was advertised as not working. I have a power supply that will work with it. It's a 4.5 volt power supply. Well, it's one of those variable ones. You can change the voltage on it. And then it takes uh, three D batteries, which is 4.5 volts. That gives your main voltage to the radio. And then it's got a couple of uh, uh, AA batteries down on the bottom, which deliver like 3.5 volts to the computer part of this up here. And that's a separate part of the power supply. So you have a power supply to the radio and a power supply to the computer with two sets of batteries. And, and both of them can create problems. And uh, as I said, I bought this in unworking condition. It was advertised as not working. I haven't even tried to power it up. I'll power it up when I do a series on trying to repair this. I'm not going to work on this, though, until I'm done building my K2. So this is going to be off in the future. I, I got it because it was cheap and it looked like it would be fun to work on. I might regret that decision later. It could be a big headache. Anyhow, that's what's new here. The only other new thing I had, which I don't have in the shack to show you, is I did finally put my 2 meter radio in my car, and I've been listening and talking on the repeaters around my local area, and I got a new microphone for that, but that's out in the car. Maybe someday I'll show you my car radio. Uh, so I just want to say I'm uh, alive and well. Things are fine here in uh, the little village of Alasia, New York, and uh, that's what we're up to. Um, hoping to get back in here working on the uh, K2 radio within maybe a week, something like that. We are going on vacation, uh, President's Day week. Uh, kids are off school. My, my youngest is 16, so he's off school. We're going down to Myrtle Beach, so I will be away for that week, but uh, I hope to get in here again soon. Hope everybody had a uh, a good New Year so far, and uh, thanks for watching. Seventy three. This is Tom.